created in your program, we begin this session with some words of welcome from His Eminence Cardinal Peter II. I wish to greet all of you very warmly in the name of the Dicastery for the Promotion of Integral Human Development and on its behalf to bid all of you heartily welcome to this uh, conference on integral nuclear disarmament. But in these two days, we are here to share a piece of good news. And it is about the global will to encourage nuclear, to encourage nuclear weapon states to persevere in, and if not, hasten their ongoing strategic reduction of nuclear arms. Senza Atomica, Sokagoka International, Unione degli Scienziati per il Desarmo, send so very special thanks and greetings also to students and young prof professionals who are here with us with a devastating, indiscriminate uh, and uncontainable effects over time and space. Similar cause for concern arises when examining the waste of resources spent on nuclear issues for military purposes, which could instead be used for worthy priorities like the promotion of peace and integral human development, as well as the fight against poverty and the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons recognizes the importance of education for peace and for disarmament in all its aspects, together with the importance of raising awareness of the risks and consequences of nuclear weapons for current and future generations. Responding along these lines entails a commitment to significant initiatives aimed at promoting a culture that rejects nuclear weapons, a culture of life and peace, one based on the dignity of the human being and on the primacy of law. Well presented and discussed at the conferences held in Oslo, in Nayarit, Mexico, and in Vienna on the humanitarian impact of nuclear weapons. These important meetings confirmed the ICRC's assessment that nuclear weapons are unique because of their tremendous destructive power and because of the level of human suffering which they use would cause. Such use, even on a limited scale, would have catastrophic consequences for human life, health, and the environment. We are talking about sustainable development goals over the next 15 years, inching towards achieving some goals. And while we have one test of a push button, it destroys the whole world. Forget about everything that you have done simultaneously. We talk about coming to an agreement on global warming. We celebrate that, trying to protect the planet. And at the same time, we have bundles and bundles of nuclear weapons, just need one push and destroy the whole world. We don't see any inconsistency between the two. To me, that is the extreme form of insanity. And we don't want to continue with this. In such a fractious and uncertain world, there are many voices that contend that the time is not right for disarmament and that weapons provide security. <laughs> there is an insinuation that disarmament is a utopian dream. We believe that quite the opposite is true. In a fractious and uncertain world, more than ever, we need disarmament as a diplomatic key to unlock the door to peaceful solutions. As was recognized in Goal 16 of Sustainable Development Goals, the illicit arms trade also prevents uh, socio-economic developments for all of us. 
The Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which was opened for signature this past September, creates additional norms for subscribing states. It effectively places nuclear weapons on the same level as chemical and biological weapons, and the further emphasis on the terrible humanitarian consequences of the use of even one nuclear weapon. As we head towards the 2020 NPT review conference, the state's parties must inject a sense of urgency into finding common ground and ensuring the continued viability and centrality of the treaty. Key to this is remembering that nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation non are two sides of the same coin. They are mutually reinforcing. In this context, it should be understood that failure to achieve, achieve concrete progress in nuclear disarmament will undermine the NPT. There is an urgent need for practical measures for irreversible, verifiable, and universal nuclear disarmament. Your remarks were very comprehensive, thank you. Because you made a bridge yeah. between nuclear disarmament, yeah. poverty, and sustainable development goals. Thank you. Thank you. Great to meet you. I thought we'll just present you okay. one of our publications, which uh, I see. has been dealing also with these issues. Very important. It's the first time that the Vatican is organizing such a conference with the cooperation with other organizations. So what do you expect to emerge out of this conference? This conference is part of a consolidated tradition in the Catholic Church. Since the beginning of the, at the atomic age, the popes have been consistently saying that uh, the, a weapon whose consequences cannot be controlled by men cannot be ethically acceptable. And on the basis of this, the doctrine of deterrence has been rejected and uh, a new style of international relations has been advocated. That instead of keeping a sense of balance and peace and uh, based on the threat of mutual destruction, we say we have to build a future on the basis of trust and confidence and dialogue with everyone as a way to resolve different problems and different ways of looking at reality. If we move in this direction, we save the human resources that are available for improving education, health, and the social needs of the population. Instead of wasting money and resources and talent, in trying to develop a technology of the nuclear weapon treaty, the idea of eliminating nuclear weapons altogether, which is something that it's an idea that we should keep alive, strongly alive. And we have, we have to work on that. We have to convince all states to push forward the acceptance of this nuclear ban. But if this does not happen, we have to be careful that at some point the situation will not slip out of slip out of hands. And you have to control what nuclear weapon states are doing. The urgent question on many people's mind is naturally how we can avert war and self annihilation. I will first, Mr. Chairman, paint a broad picture of our world as I see it here the proposal to conclude a fissile material cut off treaty to prohibit further production of fissile material has been then my view the only conclusion. The only way to eliminate the risk is to eliminate nuclear weapons. The purpose of this session is to discuss efforts at the United Nations to ban nuclear weapons. I am not here today simply to criticize that initiative. Every right-thinking person and every right-thinking organization, including NATO, wants a world without nuclear weapons, period. 
The issue is how to get there without jeopardizing international peace. The security challenges we face are diverse and evolving, but I am optimistic about the future. Otherwise, I wouldn't have this job. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had my previous job. And believe me, I never would have tried to sit down and negotiate the New START Treaty with the Russian Federation. But uh, you know the Catholic Church puts a great deal of emphasis on faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these is charity or love, it is said in the Bible. But honestly, sometimes I think the greatest of these is hope. So to end, I wanted to invite you all to come to NATO headquarters. Talk to the men and women whose job it is to see, understand, and respond to the dangers that allies face every day. And work with us to achieve lasting peace, security, and a nuclear-free world for all of us. Thank you very much. For 72 years, uh, we see a need of a prohibition of nuclear weapons. Why did such a norm come about now? Well, of course, I think part of the answer is here in the room. It's committed uh, uh, people, NGOs, ICANN, and congratulations, of course, to the Nobel Peace Prize. And it's very important that nuclear disarmament is not something in the bubble of diplomats, generals, and some academics, because everybody is, oh, we both are committed individuals through uh, roles. Uh, uh, so we need this engagement of um, society. A guarantee of security. Mm -hmm. And making this a guarantee of security and not trust them. In, in, in human relations coexistence and a commitment to common good as a source of security, but trusting rather in the possession of a weapon as a source of security, everybody wants to go for that source of security. And so if we do not stop things, it's going to be a race. Every small nation sooner or later would also say, I also want to, you know, this source of, but the source of security should not reside in this. Because what's a source of security that can also eliminate you yourself? True, so it's, 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 there's no resource of security. A resource of security is that about trust in coexistence for a common good, and therefore they need to build trust and solidarity, you know, concern and care for one another. That's really what it's going to be. Several times when you know, ambassador, whatever people have come talking about, I say, instead of investing all in all the weapons, invest in trust building. And that nobody wants to do because it's, you know, either they find it too complicated or whatever, but trust is that. I wish to express my appreciation, as many of you have already done, I imagine, to the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, in particular to the Prefect, Cardinal Peter Turkson, for the organization of this very interesting conference. Less than two months what is true 
and what is wrong. But let me tell you that I consider that even if nuclear weapons had some role in saving the world in the past, this will not continue in the forthcoming future. And there are several important reasons for that. I am very honored and deeply great, grateful for the opportunity to speak before you as a Ibakusha of Nagasask, each of you here today. As representatives of civil society, as human beings with dignity, and as peacemakers, to raise a loud voice from the Vatican for achieving the abolition of nuclear weapons. Thank you very much. SGI も and what do you expect to emerge out of this conference? I think just a new or, or, or an elevated level of awareness amongst public about the importance of this issue. I don't think the conference is going to adopt anything new in terms of, say, Catholic Church policy or any new specific initiatives, but that elevation of that interest and the awareness that this is important is vital. Will it be some kind of a feed-in for the UN conference uh, on disarmament next year? I think it feeds into a couple of processes. One is the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which has just been adopted, and the Holy See was one of the first countries to sign and ratify. Uh, nuclear risk reduction, the whole issue of North Korea and the United States, and reminding people about what would be the effect of nuclear weapons. And then the UN uh, High Level Conference, or Summit, next year on nuclear disarmament, where we expect and hope that world leaders will come and take further nuclear disarmament steps. In Catholic teaching, I, I think that this is really what that represents. Uh, what, what a Pope says lasts for, for a very long time. And uh, I believe that Pope Francis has broken new ground in terms of how the Catholic Church views nuclear weapons. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. So have you heard anything in the direction that Vatican might like to have a follow-up conference? Uh, I've not heard anything, but I, I would imagine that, that the leadership here is quite pleased with how things are developing. And I wouldn't be surprised if they continue. This is, um, in my opinion, this is something that they are not uh, treating lightly. They're, they're taking this issue very seriously and, uh, you know, this is not lip service for them. They, they want to achieve a world free of nuclear weapons. They have a significant platform uh, that they can use to do that and, uh, and my hope is that, that they'll continue They'll continue to, to put the resources and the effort and the energy behind it uh, until we achieve that goal. But what can be done now after this conference to build up this trust? We need to recognize the very many different components of the group even in this hall. There are some from religious tradition and background, some from political, from the diplomatic background, some are essential students also. Mm. So we can probably say each one can probably do something from his own angle and from his own corner. The basic thing is to discover a basic sense of humanity. And when we discover a basic sense of humanity, we understand what it means to be a human being. And when we discover what it means to be a human being, nobody needs to school another person in being a human being. If, if that's our nature, we built for brotherhood. We built for, we, we created for brotherhood. We created for coexistence. And we created to come together to pursue what is good for all of us. Now, will there be a follow-up conference? This conference uh, aims at sensitizing public opinion and creating a culture of peace. We need to emphasize and continue to educate that the way forward 
for a future of peaceful coexistence is by creating a sense of mutual trust. And uh, on this line, we hope to continue to work and enlarge the participants. We, God willing, will bring everybody together to negotiate in good faith a verifiable, an objective, non-discriminatory agreement that slowly and patiently will eliminate all atomic weapons.